So as always, the first thing we'll need to do is open Visual Studio. We'll be creating a new project. We'll be making a console app, .NET Framework in C Sharp. And we'll call this one working with numbers that create. So to get started, we should map out what our application is going to do. So we are going to ask the user for a number. We will store the user's number in a variable. We are going to need to convert that string that the user enters into the console into an integer, which is a type of number. So we'll convert string from user into a number. We are going to multiply the number by four. And then we're going to inform the user of the result in the console. And then we're going to stop program from closing. So there's a little bit more going on in this program than we have done in previous examples, but it all builds on everything we've been working towards. So let's just go ahead and start meeting some of these requirements. So first of all, we will write a line to the console. We will say, please enter a number. We'll end that line with semicolon. We will then get that number and store it in a variable. So we say var users number equals console.readline. Now we'll skip these two and actually this one and we'll just quickly put something in to stop the application from closing. So we'll say console.readline. Now we'll look at the, the more difficult parts. So until now, we've only been working with strings. We put strings out to the console, which is basically text like we've discussed before, and we receive strings from the console from the user. So actually, if we hover over this user's number, you'll see it's actually a string because console.readline is a function that returns a string. So if we want to do some mathematics on this particular string, what we'll need to do is convert it into a number. Now, there are different types of numbers in C Sharp. Uh, for the purposes of today, we will be looking at integers. Um, integer is essentially a whole number, so it's no fra not a fractional number. It's not a point 0.1 or a point 0.2. It's a, it's a whole number. It's a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4. So let's look at how we could convert a string into a number. So we'll need to create a new variable. So we'll say variable, and we'll call this one actual number. And we'll say that one is equal to... The, well, actually, let's just back that up. So we're going to create a, an actual number variable, and we're going to set it as equal to the result of a function. And now the, the integer object, the int object, has a function in there called pass. What pass does is it takes a string and it converts it into an integer. Um, so we could say int dot pass. And then we could type in the user's number there, pass that one in. And what this will do is it will take that string and it will turn it into an int. So if we hover over actual number, you'll see that this one is an integer or an int. So now that we've got our integer, we're able to do some multiplication, or some subtraction, some addition, some division, and that'll all work just fine. But we can't actually, if we try and add a string to another string, we just join the two bits of text together, um, which is obviously not what we want for a calculator type uh, application. So let's now multiply our actual number uh, to get a result. So we'll say var for a new variable, we'll call this one result equals the actual number times four. And if we hover over result, you'll see that also gives us an int. So we've taken this integer, we've timesed it by this integer, because obviously four is a whole number and it's an int, and we've now got our result. So now what we need to do is inform the user of our result. So we can say console.writeLine, and we'll put some friendly text in here, we'll say 
the result of the process is, and then we'll just add on our result here at the end. So it's result, and we'll end that line. And we'll just recap on everything we've done. So we've asked for a number, the user's given us a number, the number came through as a string, so we've had to pass it or convert it into an integer, which we've done. And then we've taken that integer and we've times it by four, which gives us our result. And we've said to the user, the result of the process is, and then we've added the result onto the end there. And then we're just gonna wait for the, the application to close when the user enters another line. So let's go ahead and run that. So please enter a number. Five, and the result of the process is 20 because four times five is 20. So that's how we could do multiplication, but maybe we change the requirements of our program and we say, actually, we want to divide the number by four. So we'll go ahead and we'll change that time sign to a divide sign and we'll start our program. So now we'll enter 20. We'll divide it by four and we all know the answer is five so you can see how this is very powerful it's very simplistic at the same time so this is this is the same type of syntax or the same type of code that you would be typing into excel when you do your cell formulas and things like that uh, there is a few things to watch out for though so what we'll do actually let's look at subtraction first go in there and I'll subtract four so say 20 and 20 minus 4 is 16 so that's what we'd expect so we can do our subtraction but we can also do addition so we can say whatever we enter plus 4 so that would be 24 and if we close that down so we, we've done multiplication we've done division we've done subtraction and we've done addition but there is a few things that you need to be careful with with maths on uh, when you're in your program so the division is the, the real dangerous one so we could do our actual number divided by four but if we try and divide by zero let's have a look what happens so please enter a number we type in 20 and our program crashes and there's a, a very specific type of error that this is called, this is called, called a divide by zero exception. Uh, computers can't divide by zero, and so they, they won't even try. It will cause a crash. And actually, the .NET framework spotted this before it even happened, and it stopped us from doing that, and it crashed our program for us. So it's if you're dealing with user input, perhaps what we actually did was we changed this logic to four. And then we divided that by the actual number that we got from the user. We might have an instance where we could run our program and we could say two, and the result of two divided by four, four divided by two is two, which is fine. But if we were to run that program again and actually divide it by zero, that will crash our program. And that kind of introduces you to this scenario where your code could actually be perfectly fine there's no errors in it we've got nothing in the error list but it's still possible for your program to crash because we've got those users inputting values and when the users input a value you know it could be anything and we need to make sure that our program can cope with that one way we could protect ourselves is by doing some conditional logic on that number so let's say we will divide four by the user's number so that's what we're doing here. We're, our result is four divided by the user's number. So what we should really do to make sure that this can't crash our program is we should be saying, if the actual number is not zero, because we know zero will cause a crash. And then we'll move our division into this section here. And actually, now we will only ever divide by a number that isn't zero and you see here that result is now an error because result is inside the scope of this conditional logic so what we would also need to do is to move up those lines of code to sit inside this scope here because result it, it can't jump out of these squiggly brackets so it's something to bear in mind anything inside of a bracket 
is only available to other things inside of that bracket. So we can access actual number from outside because inside this bracket is this bracket. So it's it can go up, but it can't go sort of up and across. And it's just something you need to be aware of. It's called scoping. Uh, scoping is, you know, crucial for your application. You know, you won't be able to name things uh, if they've already been used elsewhere in the current scope. And, and actually, if we put something inside of these brackets above here, that would also be available in our main and actually in any other functions that we have. So it's, it's important to be aware of scope, but we'll cover that later. So let's go back to our example. So we've, we've got our actual number. We won't perform this action if it equals zero. Um, however, we need to do something if the number does equal zero. So that's where our else condition will come in. And actually, what we would say here is console.write line say naughty user you know we can't divide by zero. We are trying to crash me. The program definitely doesn't want to crash because that'll be the end of it. So let's start this program. And now let's try and divide by zero again. And it tells us that we're a very naughty user and we should know better. So that is the, the very basics of working with whole numbers in your console application. Some of the pitfalls around you know, controlling for what could be bad user input, and then obviously converting strings into numbers using the pass method, and then outputting numbers to the console using the string join syntax. So I would suggest going away and perhaps trying to combine some of the techniques from the previous lesson, perhaps set up a console application with an add command, a subtract command, a multiply command, and have some command handlers that deal with adding and subtracting different numbers in different scenarios and then outputting that to the user.